Hello, everyone. Um, I'm Patricia Ayala, and I'm excited today to present to you on behalf of a wonderful team uh, on Prisma Search, Prisma S, developing a new reporting guideline extension for literature searches. So I have no actual or potential conflicts of interest in relationship to this presentation, but I do hold a volunteer position, and I'm an ambassador for the Center of Open Science, so I did want to go ahead and disclose that. So, like I said, we have this wonderful team. Uh, I'm excited to be presenting on behalf of them. This project is being led by Melissa Rechlifson, Jonathan Kofel, and Shona Kurtley. So they are like the brain masters of this, and I'm honored to be, you know, working with them. And part of the executive team is also Siv Washington-Smith and myself. Uh, we also have to recognize and happy to recognize the consensus conference attendees during the Medical Library Association and Canadian Health Library Association co-conference in 2016, and our experts who we've reached out to uh, for feedback. So, you know, there's a lot of reporting guidelines being published, so why are you reporting guidelines? Um, well, there's really no consensus so far on how to adequately report searching methods for systematic reviews, and given that systematic reviews, scoping reviews, and really all evidence syntheses, the data collection really, it, it completely relies on the search strategy. It, it was absolutely important uh, to create a new reporting guideline, particularly given how poorly search strategies are conducted and reported. So our process uh, for developing a guideline was this, uh, we follow guidance developers um, of health research reporting guidelines. Uh, there's actually guidelines for guidelines. There's a guideline on how to develop guidelines out there. Um, we developed and published a protocol. We searched the literature. We conducted a Delphi study, uh, consensus conference, consolidation, and we currently have a draft available for review that's been out for several months now. So, while we were developing the checklist, uh, we, our intention was to be as broad as possible uh, and inclusive as possible in both our research and validating techniques. Um, so we sought experts, methodologists, researchers, editors from as many countries as we could. Um, our search was also really extensive to try to cover as much ground as possible, um, and in, we've continued so far. So I wanted to give you an overview of the timeline. Uh, our initial search, three years ago or so, um, we sought and included um, 405, 4, 405 items from 61 sources that were consolidated into 123. Uh, this was further narrowed down in our Delphi survey and consensus conference. Uh, in our consolidation phase, 14 items and 10 sub-items. Um, this is where we also ex uh, developed our explanation and elaboration. In our draft phase, we've received 258 comments from 22 individuals and organizations. And currently, uh, we're working on collecting and organizing this feedback and categorizing into groups. And this brings me to now, to where we are today. So currently, we have classified big feedback into several categories. So whether it's a ma major feedback, a minor feedback, whether it's linguistic, whether it's a language issue, um, or whether some of the feedback um, was irrelevant, unclear, or not appropriate, not adequate. We reviewed each comment individually, so two team members have reviewed each comment uh, and made suggestions on how to proceed based on the feedback categories that we've developed. And currently, we're going through discussion um, in order to, and we've, we've been discussing with also the developers of Prisma Search, like Mother Prisma, um, if you will, uh, and among us, because we want to ensure alignment with the update of Prisma. So today, I wanted to talk about four highly discussed items uh, where feedback has been substantial and highly debated. Um, 
So these are deduplication, dates of coverage, data mining and text analysis, and justification. So the first one, um, so, and here are some questions that have come up uh, in the feedback stage, and also that we've asked ourselves. So does the duplication methods matter? Do, do we care? Um, there are published methods out there, but so what? Uh, clearly, the duplication does impact results greatly, but would it be better to ask searchers to save copies of non-deduplicated files and then the final deduplicated file? You know, these are some questions that we are uh, mulling. Days of coverage. Um, you know, is from inception good enough? Is, is that good enough to ask to be reported in a search strategy? Is it only applicable to certain databases? For example, Ovid, uh, through the Ovid interface, um, EBSCO. Um, there are major issues with regards to this uh, in certain databases. If we remove it, how much are we losing in terms of transparency, reporting, and accountability? Data mining text analysis tools. Uh, so is it necessary to record and report how a search was developed? How do we address newer, more automated ways of searching? Are the methods so new that we can't really capture how they should be reported? Um, there's actually articles that are now, you know, that point to some of these issues as well. Um, and justification. In light of search errors, research, which often calls a missing term an error, even if the searcher may have considered it and deliberately not used it for one reason or another, are those choices important enough to require reporting? Um, there's a study that included 137 systematic reviews in which the number of search strategies contained some type of error, uh, and this was really high, like it was 92.7%. Errors that affected recall were the most frequent at 78%, and the most common search errors involved missing terms in both natural language and control language, and those related to mesh search terms, so medical subject heading terms, and the non-retrieval of their more specific terms. So, you know, is it necessary to record and report how a search, um, you know, was constructed and, and some of these choices that, that we made, um, that the searcher made along the way? So, of course, this is just the tip of the iceberg, and I've just gone very high overview of massive amounts of information, data, tools, and instruments. And because we believe in open science and transparency, and it's exactly what we're developing, a reporting guideline to increase transparency and reproducibility, uh, we practice what we preach. So all our project documents are fully available via the open science framework. And here you can find everything from our protocol, examples, and some of these are living documents, obviously. Um, the consent documents, survey data, survey instruments, the item development, all the drafts, everything can be found there, including some of the comments we found. Um, so I, I, please, I welcome you to take a look at that. And here's the link also uh, in the slide. So I wanted to come back to this four highly discussed items and bring the conversation to this and and really, what we would love um, and welcome is your thoughts, questions, comments, and suggestions, not only about these four points, but anything else you'd like to contribute to. So thank you so much for your time and attention. Uh, like I said, keep, let's keep the conversation going uh, with, via Twitter. Our contact information is there. So thank you so much, Conference Santiago. Muchas gracias.